Hello everyone, this is Cuddles and Crafting working on my DP, my diamond painting. Uh, been working on it this morning. Uh, yeah, look, you might hear my fan going, it's hot. It's a big old sweater on. It's hot in here, so I got the fan on. Um, I just want to say thank you for those who have subscribed to my channel. Um, Zachary, I've been, I, I see Zach, I see Zachary. Um, just want to say thank you for, you know, commenting and, you know, keeping it clean and thank you for watching and for the nice comments you've been leaving. Um, I'm trying my best, you know, just to keep you updated on everything that I'm doing. Um, just one thing I will, that I'm working on, big project I'm working on now and that is to stock up my garage to do a pantry, um, a food pantry, like for canned goods, dry goods, and stuff like that. Um, so in case any of my family or there's like a lockdown or anything like that, we have food here so we could, you know, have like, you know, corn, green beans, uh, beans, you know, a whole bunch of canned goods of different types of things, like if we want to eat Sloppy Joe or something, uh, Sloppy Joe uh, mix, um, cake mix, cornbread mix. I'm not saying y'all don't like cornbread. It's okay. Um, you know, just filling up your pantry, getting our pantry ready. So just in case my family members or um, friends here in my neighborhood might need something, we do have a pantry. Uh, we're gonna get the, well. We're, we're stacking it up right now. So every day I've been going food shopping, just getting what I can. Um, and also, I just want to make sure that we have food because you know every time we nickel and diamond it, nickel and diamond it, and it gets frustrating sometimes when you well, have to nickel and diamond it and. I was like, why don't we just keep, just do a big pantry? Because I was raised up where my step grandmother, um, she would have big buckets of flour, sugar, um, her uh, flour, sugar, and I think she had something else. I forgot what it was, but she would have buckets of it because she baked a lot. She cooked a lot. So she wouldn't have to do that. She would go smart and final and stack up on the big bags and fill up these big old um, buckets. And I was like, you know what? You know, we used to have to go outside in the garage. We, it was so heavy we couldn't carry it in. So we had to go out in the garage and she had a deep freezer full of meat and stuff like that. And it's kind of good to have a pantry and have it stocked up for the next six years if you have to, you know. And then you could just switch your food out as you, in the, as you date them as you look at the date you can switch it out because you know and just switch it out but I just like to have things so I don't have to go buy it later on I mean you might have to go get milk and cereal and stuff like that yeah because uh, you know little other stuff you, you can go to the store and buy because pretty much my son he likes a lot of cereal and milk and stuff like that we could also get powdered milk. And I know, yeah, like, ooh, you know, I know that powdered milk was like, horrible, but look, when it comes to an emergency, you get, you'll get the taste of, you know, you, you'll get used to the taste, because at first I, my mom bought powdered milk, and we was raised up on powdered milk. It's not that bad. It's not bad. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, once you get used to the taste is different, then you'll be like, okay. But I would never drink it. I put, I'll, drink, I'll just do it for my cereal, but you know, I'll pour the milk out. <laughs> but, yeah. But other than that, um, just working on that and trying to get that done. And that's kind of good, like, especially, you know, getting the kids involved in it. You know, like, okay, we're going to fill up the pantry, do this, just teaching them how to survive. So when they get out there, they too will know how, 
they don't have to nickel and dime it. And my mom, okay, like, just stock up on canned goods, your dry goods, um, um, deep freezer. If you have a deep freezer, you can put, um, a meat. And there's places where you can get, I know out here in California, there's a place out here where you can get, um, it's a market I go to. They have a, um, in the back, they have meat in the back, and what it is, you could buy, buy like $30, $25, up to $200 in meat in packs. Like, they give you this big box full of meat, and it's a list that they have on a wall where it, they go by. So, if, say, if you want to buy $200 worth of meat, or if you want to buy $100 worth of meat, or if you want to buy $95 worth of meat, or $85, it goes down to like 20 I think 20 or 20 or 35 dollars worth of meat you know it depends on how full you want to stock your fridge up um sometimes you could go to um uh, save you foods uh, where they have meat for cheap and sometimes two dollars three dollars a pound depending like and then they got the big packets for four or something or two something or three dollars you could go there and you can buy meat and stock up and put that in a freezer too and just you know get a little decent you don't have to get no big expensive deep freezer i went to walmart and i got this type of apartment size deep freezer and i put it in my garage and i keep it there and i can store it up and put all my meat in there so just you know just you know little by little i'm stocking it up and once i finish with it I'll show you um, what I did, but right now I need to find a cedar chest, like to put my dry goods in, and that will stay inside the um, the, the the kitchen where I will have like my um, my dry goods, like cake mix, um, cake mix. Uh, Icing for the cake mix, um, Jiffy, my Jiffy cornbread mix, stuff like that that comes in a box. You can put, um, I watched my, uh, my grandma put stuff like that in her chest and she kept all her cake mix and stuff. And she had it in the house, but she had it in our, in our family room where she kept all her dry goods in there because it won't take up all your cabinet space and if you have a garage if you don't, and this is just think if you don't have a garage you can um, use a bookshelf you can get one of those bookshelves like I have two bookshelves one in the garage and I have one in my kitchen and I put my canvas on there for right now until I can find room to put my canvas but right now they stay on the bookshelf so um, just little options you can have to do a pantry um, and I'll share that with you later how to start your pantry um, but other than that working on this diamond painting um, it's been kind of hard I've been tired like tired because I'm doing a lot um, trying to get everything done and it seems like when I work on this diamond paint, it's taking me forever. I worked on it this morning a little bit, and then I got tired. Yesterday, I had a headache. I had a bad headache yesterday, and I don't know what happened, y'all. I just don't know what happened. Just, just wanted to go lay down for a minute and woke up with a headache. But anywho, how are you guys doing today? I hope you guys are having a good day. It was nice. Oh, it was, you guys, it was so nice. But I know it's supposed to be raining. We have rain coming out here in California. I don't know about this rain. Um, but I sure don't want to be out there in the, in the rain. But I know it's supposed to be raining. Having a rainstorm coming. And I'm sitting here like, 
um, let me just go ahead and do everything I gotta do tomorrow so I don't have to go out in this rain. I'm not gonna have to do that. Yes. Mm -mm. Like you guys know, I wasn't feeling well before and now I'm feeling better and healthy. And the only thing I have to do is my, I did my, well, I did my exercise. Like I told you guys, I broke my shoulder bone. But um, I'm using my, I can use my arm. I just can't lift up heavy things or lay on it or anything like that. But I won't know what my results are until until Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. It's in a couple of days. They'll let me know. So hopefully it's nothing broken. There's something that could be either fixed or I could um because I want to play basketball again. And I like to play sports. I like to play tennis. How many of you guys play tennis or basketball? And you know basketball is the thing, but, you know, I can play tennis too. I was good with tennis though. Basketball I played for school. But, um, tennis is my thing. That's, yeah. Now, if I tell you a story, now, that this, this that's a story in itself on... Um, I think I have to tell you a story. So I was going to college and for the weekend I wanted to do something fun, like have a fun class. So I took up tennis and my husband's best friend teaches tennis. And knowing that my husband helped me pretty much with my tennis and everything, um because he too used to teach tennis too, um, I got really good. So my backhand is very powerful, y'all. Because once I use my backhand, it's over. So I would play with, with my husband and, you know, I mean, I wasn't good. I can't, but it was good enough. So as I'm going to class, um, I used to play with the ladies, a lot of the ladies, and we would play. But I guess they start complaining to the coach. That was hitting too hard. What are you supposed to do? It's a game. It's a match. You supposed to. So he said. He put me to the side. He said, "Look, you have the best teacher, and I know you good at playing tennis." He said, "But the girls are complaining because you hitting too hard." So you said we got to get it over. So I said, "Okay." So he put with the guys, and then they was like, uh-uh. <laughs> so I was like, just off. He's like, look, you already passed this class. I already know you're going to pass the test. And I passed the test. I already knew what, I thought, what the test was about. So I passed the test, passed the class. What they were saying, it's just like, look, tennis is not to be baby, okay? If, okay, I can see if you're just learning, then that's fine, but... If we have to pass this test and we have to get the ball over the net, look, don't complain, don't hate. You know, people be hating, just crying. Like, what you crying for? So I thought you thought it was hilarious. So I was like, okay. So I had to go easy, y'all. I couldn't play like I wanted to play. So I'm like, man, well, can you tell me what somebody else to play? Like, everybody here, beginners? I'm like, okay, cool. I think I just was in the wrong class, y'all. Just in the wrong class. But I just took the class for fun. Girl couldn't handle no fun. But, anywho. Uh, I don't know. You guys probably like, how did you hurt your, your shoulder? Well, that story, too. I was working for an after-school program for Code 10 in California. And it was a couple of young men out there. We had, a, like, an indoor gym. And me, since I was on my lunch break, I was playing basketball. And, you know, youngsters, y'all think because we 25, 30 years old that we can't sit there and play basketball. Well, one of the boys called me an old lady. And I just had to show him that this old lady played basketball. Well, in this story, I go up 
you know, we're playing basketball. I go up, I get the ball from them, and I go up and I go do a layup, and I go up in the air. Now, remind y'all, just imagine a big old pole, real tall, tall, like way up in there. I don't know why they had it that tall, but to get the height to, for me to get it up in there to do that layup, I have to run real fast and then do the layup. And me, me, I used to do backflips off the roof. Don't do that, y'all. Don't do no backflips off the roof. Don't do that. Um, I went up real high and I was hanging from the rim of the basketball and I heard something pop in my shoulder. And I'm looking like, oh man, please don't tell me. I just dis dislocated my shoulder. So even though I had to tell my boss that what happened and she's like, oh, okay. So I had to go, they had me go to this place that do um, physical therapy where they help you. You have to take this plastic long thing and you have to attach it to the door and you have to pull your arm my hand I only could put my hand because I couldn't do like this because it would hurt so I have to use my hand like this to pull the little rubber string thing that I was hanging on inside the door I did that and I um yeah well it stopped hurting for a while but as we get older that pain came back so it's now it's like it hurts and y'all so my doctor is trying to see because I want to go I went for another after school program and I went up on this storage thing trying to close it and I heard my shoulder pop again I didn't tell my boss that I popped my shoulder out so I just went home and went to the doctor the next day and told the doctor like I popped it out my shoulder out at work trying to close the shed and I shouldn't have did that, but, but I popped it out again, and so, yeah, but ever since then, it's just been bothering me, and I just, you know, just didn't want to complain about it, so I just, just let it be, and just took pain as much as I can, but as, after I left that job, just after to, you know, do other things, family take care of family, so, I end up, the pain start coming back, and I don't know why, it's just coming back, and it's hard for me to sleep on my right side without putting pressure on it, so yeah, that's how I end up popping my shoulder out of place and why, oh, and then how I think I, cr I cracked the top part because I picked up a water bottle, one of them big five gallon water bottle, and I heard a snap at the top part of the shoulder, like a bone just cracked. So I'm getting that checked out. So I can't lift anything heavy. Um, even it hurts even if I lay on my right left side, it still hurt because I feel like the pressure is, um, the the pressure of it of my arm just felt like it was gonna fall off, y'all. But it's not gonna fall off, it's not gonna do that, don't worry. Got kids, this is like a like a kid, no kids thing up. Got kids, no, don't worry. It's I'm fine. I ain't gonna fall off. You know, just 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 an expression. Um but yeah. Doing that and so going through this pain that I have and have to do diamond painting because like after a while I could do diamond painting but I could do it only for a little bit so I'll take a break every now and then and this is probably why it's taking me longer than any other time that I did a diamond painting I was like six weeks it was done this one's taking almost a year and a month just to get done and I'm looking like oh gosh please let me get this done I just want to get it done, y'all. I just want to get it done. So, what I'm doing, I'm filling in. You got another thing right. So, the next thing that I'm trying to fill in is these letter P. I'm going to do number 14. The letter P. Um, and that is number 14 on my list. 
I'm looking for it, y'all. I'm looking for it. Because there's so many colors, especially when you have so much color blocking. Like, you see all the different colors in this thing. It's so much color blocking. And it that takes a long time, too. Especially if you have a big kit like this that just goes over. It's a lot to to do. But I'm not complaining. I love doing this. I love doing this. Just, I just want to hear everybody get it done. That's all it is. <laughs> Because I just want to start on the next one. I want to do my Diamond Art Club painting. And doing this one, I'm like, I got to get this big one out the way so I can work on this one. And, and that's kind of good to do this because once, you know, it's, it's a good practice to, to because, you know, I, I'm always doing something or some type of project. And I don't finish that one. I go on to the next one. Ooh, I, I want to do this. Ooh, I want to do this. And I want to do this. And I never, ever, you guys finish off the project so this is my this is me training myself to look you started this project you finish it see the whole project through so I'm 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 I know you guys probably like you're working on the same project yeah sorry y'all but I got to be persistent and I have to finish this project it's, it's, it's really, it's a real good training. So I can't tell my son, hey, you got to finish your project. And then I don't finish my project. You know, you got to practice what we preach. So just if you have a project and you're like, oh, I don't want to do it. This is a good train thing to discipline yourself and say, hey, okay, I did this project. I started it. I'm going to finish it. Because when you go to a job and they want you to finish a project, you got to finish it. And this is good for you young ones who are in school. You have an assignment. And you're like, oh, I don't want to do this assignment. Look, this is the way that you could learn. And it's really good to do this. And I said it to many of my students who didn't want to do a project. I always told them to um, just imagine... Every time that you do your homework, that's more homework your teacher got to do. Think about it. Every time you do your homework, the teacher's got to take that assignment. They got to look over your assignment. They That's their homework, too, because they have to grade your assignments and everything. And they probably don't have to do that. Now, much things for you to pass that class, they have to look over all 36 students' assignment. And then they have to get that back to you. So they can say, okay, you got an A, you got a B, you got a C. You know, if you finish your assignment, that's your grade, right? And you want to get good grades. So just imagine if you have to, especially, you know, when you really don't want to do nothing. Look, just tell you to teach you some assignment homework. You want to give them some homework? Do your work. It's not, it's, it's not really hard to do your work. It's just like, I know you guys like to play video games and stuff like that. And I'm talking to high school kids. I'm talking to middle school kids. I'm talking to elementary children. And, you know, and it's me. It's really to keep your parents off your back. Do your work. Why? Because when you do your work and you do your assignments and you stay active with your class in the morning... That means not playing video games and then being on your being on your uh, video game and then having your computer on the side and playing video games. That's not being active. You have to pay attention. So when you're doing this and do it like look how much you put, all the hours you think about it, all those hours that you put in your video games. Just imagine that you're that you're in. A school video game you're playing a school video game and the teacher is giving you an assignment and it's a history project use your imagination say okay I'm in class how can I do this while your teacher is talking about history or something like that imagine that that history project you have is a video game imagine that you know you're in a, a, a game with this history with um, if they're talking about, you know, um, um, King, King Tubman or, 
or uh, they're talking about the um, 50, the 19th centuries or the 18th centuries. Um, think about it as a video game, and then once you do that, then you'll be able to do the assignment, you know. And you only have like a couple of hours, like only a few hours in each class, because each class, by the time you get out of school, especially if you go from 7.45 to 12.30 or 1.30, just imagine you got the rest of the day to play your video games. I know it's hard for some students to, because it's, 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 it's hard to like, being active because you're not in school, you're not around your friends, and then you have your video game sitting there. You're like, okay, either I play my video games or I pay attention to your teacher. Well, look, and I tell this to my son too. For your teacher to help you and your parents to help you, you have to help too because you guys are all a team. Your teacher, your mom, and your dad or grandma or auntie, whoever's taking care of you, and your teacher is a team. When you guys like work as a team, and you say, okay, how can I get on time into my classroom? Did you up all night, you want to play video games all night, how can I, um, you have to change your clock hours. So if you, if you say, if you up all night playing video games, and you know you have to be up class at 7.45 in the morning. Now, I'm just not going to talk to y'all. I'm talking to my son, too. You have to change the time that you're playing and go to sleep. So, 9 o'clock, bedtime. So, say, okay, I'm going to play my game for at least about an hour. And you're only supposed to be playing a game, video games for an hour. You're supposed to have 8 hours of sleep. And I'm going to tell you like this. If you go to sleep at nine and you wake up at seven or 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 six thirty, for you have breakfast, get up at seven, have breakfast, eat some pop tarts or something, cereal, whatever you like to eat in the morning, and then seven forty-five, you're in the, uh, a little bit, you're at your computer, you're logged in, ready to go at seven forty-five. What you could do is I say, okay, in in between breaks, my son. He used to do this. He used to, like, okay, in between breaks, I'll get something to eat, play a video a game, and then go back into my thing. But then that start wasn't working. Um, take a little break, play a little video game, have a clock. And what I do, I put a clock in his room. He has a phone. Look at your clock. Goes, okay, I had to be in class at this time. So I have from this time to this time to play a game. Clear your mind, whatever you're thinking about, clear your mind. And then at that time, make sure you're in that class. Um, there's other ways that you and your parents, and, and I give it up to parents who homeschool, because I know it's hard for parents too. And if you're a parent watching this, I know that it's hard to get your kids and to be active in class because I go through the same thing and I don't know what's going on with these teenagers. But... <laughs> It's like, it's hard, and I and I tell my son, I know, because it's like they don't want to go to school, they don't want to be in class, they don't, but I tell them, life, once you get out on your own, you're going to wish you was in class, you're going to wish you were in school, because I sure do wish I could, if I could do what you guys do, stay home and do homeschool, I think I would have did better, even though I... From, I think from kindergarten to fifth grade, I had all A's. I went to Sacramento, lived in Sacramento, had all A's. Once I came back here, to, um, back to my hometown, like my grades dropped. And I'm like, because I wasn't getting, it was different teaching than out there in Sacramento than it was out here, but it was different. And then I was kids and stuff like that, things you go through as teenagers. Um, you get bullied, you get, you know, kids teasing you, talking about you on the bus and stuff like that. Um, and I get it. I do. I get it. I, I was bullied. Um, people, because I was too kind-hearted, they said. They said I was too kind-hearted, so they were trying to toughen me up and, you know, how I was raised. 
was to treat people kind with kindness, but they didn't get that until after they got older. Um, because they felt like, you know, I was just too kind, and I knew what other people went through or what they were mad about, and I couldn't say certain things to certain people. So, I had to be quiet about it. So, I, they didn't understand why I wasn't. They thought I was talking about their mom, but I wasn't. It was just that I saw something that happened, and I couldn't talk about it. And my family said, don't talk about it, so I couldn't talk about it. Um, and that person was very two years old at the time. And I had to witness something that I didn't want to see. So I couldn't talk about it. So people used to, you know, and I wasn't. People would ask me about this person's mom, and I couldn't talk about it. It was a sad thing. So, anywho, um, being, being, I couldn't understand why they were doing what they were doing, but as I got older, then they finally told me why, and they apologized. As I got older, I wish they would have told me this when I was, like, in school. Then I would have explained to them, hey, I, there's certain things I can't talk about. And, and it's like, no, it's just people are asking me, and I just tell them I don't know, you know. Um, but anywho, um, you know, I understand that you don't want to deal with certain things, but just think about once you get your education, nobody could take that education away from you guys. Nobody could take that away once you get your education. And I know it's hard with learning and stuff like that, but I have trouble with math. I always had trouble with math, and I was like, oh, no, I can't do math. I passed math in high school, but I had to take, get out of a class just to focus because, you know, when your friends want to talk to you or people passing notes or, you know, it's somebody distracting the classroom and you can't hear what the teacher is saying, I get it. But now you guys are homeschooled, and I wish I could be homeschooled. I think it's more fun at home school because I could eat my food that I like to eat at home. Um, I could, um, I could, you know, I'm in my room. I could be in my pajamas. I don't got to get dressed. I don't got to go outside to the cold bus at 6 o'clock in the morning at 6.5 to catch the bus to be at school at 7. So, see, y'all got it good now. Take advantage of this home school. Don't take it for granted. Take it, embrace it. You know what? I'm at home school. I'm in my pajamas. I can get up, eat, and just sit there and listen to my teacher talk. That's it. Write down little notes every now and then. Keep a little paper or something. Listen to what she's saying. You know, be inactive with her. Say, okay. And if she's answering your question, be be present. You know, don't sit there and just like, okay, I'm going to go to sleep. No, it don't work that way. You have to be present and listen to your teacher because I'm going to tell you there's something that that's going to help you in the long run to survive in this world especially to survive in this world education is very important because you're going to have to one day move out of your parents home and you're going to have to take care of bills you have to buy your own food pay your car insurance pay your utilities light gas trash um, you got to get car insurance because you can't drive around to see without no insurance. And you're going to have to um, be able to survive in here. And you're going to be like, well, how did mom and dad do it? Well, it's tough for us parents, too, because we got to feed y'all. We got to clothe you, buy you want things, you want expensive clothes. We, we have to save up. We have to pay utilities. You have to pay their rent. You have to pay or pay your mortgage. Um, we got to pay for insurance. We got to have we got insurance on you guys. We got insurance on us. So that way, when we, when it's our time, we can leave you guys some little cash and stuff like that. But you have to be able to do your part in school. It's very important to get that education. So you, when you get out your own, you'll be able to know. Hey. Well, I already know this because I learned this in school. I know about this because we learned this in school. And when somebody tell you something like, oh, I already know that. Why? Because we did it in school. Teachers, teachers, they, 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 they can be your best friend. 
they can teach you a lot. So go easy on teachers and and learn it for yourself. Don't learn it because I'm saying it to you or your parents saying it to you. T learn what you can learn and take all the learning from these teachers for, um, that they're giving you. Learn it and and you know it is going to help you trust me trust me it's going to help in a long way because i wish i could do home school i wish i could have stayed home when i was in school because many times i didn't want to go to school i didn't want to wake up and go to school and my mom made me go to school I, sometimes i had to walk like like five miles over a hill just to get to school. If I missed the school bus, I had to walk all the way from the west side, all the way to my high school just to get to school. Because if I wasn't there, I was in trouble. But you guys get to be at home. You guys are lucky. You guys get to be at home. Oh, man. I was sitting in one of my son's class, the math class, and I was learning. And everybody learns differently. But I like how his math teacher teaches his math because I understood it. I did it wrong the first time, but I had to sit there in that classroom. I said, oh, this is so fun to sit in this classroom. Even though we had the camera off, but I was listening to his teacher talking and and how he was explaining the math. I'm like, oh, man, I wish he was my math teacher because I would have learned that quickly. I would have learned that really, really quickly. But Anywho, um, just to give you guys things and while I'm working on my diamond painting, um, everything I'm saying to you is just to help you to understand why it's important that you stay active. You get on the computer in the morning, get up, get some sleep, get eight hours of sleep, get up and, and do what you have to do to, um, Get your education. It's very important. That's all. I can't stress it no more. Well, and I'm saying it's very important. I know sometimes it's hard. You don't want to get up. You want to play your games and stuff like that. Listen, I have to do three jobs. Well, actually, four jobs because I'm a parent. I'm a business owner. I wasn't always. I didn't always didn't have my business. I was doing diamond painting. I was drawing and stuff. I just never showed anybody. Um. When you grow up and you have more responsibilities and you're, you know, going, wow, how did my mom do it? I now I appreciate my mom and my dad and people who took care of me because and my teachers who taught me because now everything that they taught me, I put it to my everyday life now. I know, I'm like, oh, wow, then my teacher said this, or my, you know, my mom said this, or my counselor said this, or my principal said this, and everything that everybody ta taught me, I took it seriously, because when I got out here, everything I learned in school, everything that my parents and, and everybody who was trying to tell me everything, I learned it, and I apply it, and now I can run a business, I can, well, actually two, because I do my artwork, I do my hair products. Um, I, you know, I know how to invest money because when you learn an investment about investment, you're dealing with money, you're dealing with numbers. That's math. I teach my son how to do his investment and, and while he's in school, he's got an investment. So every $25 he get, it goes into the bank. That money makes money for him. And while he's sitting here, he's at 500 and something dollars. Why? Because now he's sitting there at school and I told him, look, while you sitting here at school, your money's making money for you. It's teaching about money and life. And pay attention. Pay attention. I mean, this is not to preach to you or anything. It's just that I get what you guys are going through because I've been through it. Um, I, I understand that it's hard just to sit down and listen to a teacher and a lot of kids just making all random noisy. I get it. It's distracting and you can't learn anything when you got one person on this line and this person doing this I get it especially if you have that short attention span where you can't sit there for a long period of time just listen to somebody talk I get it I understand went through it 
I just had to, I just couldn't deal with the noise. So they took me out of another classroom and put me in an ROP program to sit there so I could focus on what I'm learning. It helped me. And don't think because you're in an ROP program or a special ed program or you can't get certain things that you're not going to get it. Trust me, you're going to get it, but you're going to get it on your pace. Even if it has to take you a while to get it, just write down, take notes what the teacher is saying. Take notes, write down, copy everything. If she's, if they're showing you something on the screen and they're showing you how to do something, write it down so when you look at it and you have problems and you can't talk to your teacher at a certain time, you could go in and say, hey, I don't get it. And ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions about um, what you're learning. Ask questions because the closed mouth ain't going to get hurt. Okay? Ask questions to your teachers so you can have a better understanding. Hey, I didn't get this. Can you do that over again? They pretty sure would show you or they'll go like, hey, look, after class or after school, let's do this for 30 minutes. Come back on your screen for 30 minutes and I'll show you or they'll go back over it. Because when your teacher's asking, do anybody have any question, say yes. Don't think about if all the other kids going to laugh at you or they're going to say, oh, you dumb. You no, you're not dumb for asking the question. No question is never dumb. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And I'm, the reason why I'm saying this to you because I ask questions. My teachers, my teachers are like, okay, look, what, what is it? Because I know my teachers like, they won't go past the next one unless they know everybody in that classroom understands what they're going to. If they don't have time, then you can ask them after school. Say, hey, I don't get what you was going through. Can you go over this problem with me? They have tutoring after after school on your computer. They have CAPS after school program. CAPS is a really good program. Um, that they can help you have disguised learning or they can help you do your um, homework and stuff like that. It's not like a, like they could do, but they could probably go over it with you. Um, take advantage of these programs, after school programs. Take advantage of when your teacher want to tutor you after school, after they finish on, the, on, your, on your online your social distance learning or distant learning. After school, teachers will take time, maybe 10 or 15 minutes to go over whatever you have a problems with. Take advantage of that because it will help you. Don't be shy not to ask your teacher for help. Don't close in and lock all your feelings inside. And it's not good to lock your feelings inside and don't tell your parents, hey, I'm having trouble with this subject. Tell your parents, hey, I'm having trouble with this subject. I'm not getting it. If you're not getting it, if the parents don't know how to do it, then you say, hey, teach, I don't know how to do this. There's people that will help you with your work, with your homework, or the assignment. There, that's what they're there for. Um, so, with all that being said, I don't want to bore you on this one because I know a lot of people are like, okay, what is she talking about? No, the things I'm telling students because I, I'm a parent. Um, my son goes through the same thing. I went through the same thing. A lot of teachers of us went through something that way we don't understand, but we're all a team. And remember your moms, your parents, grandma, aunties, whoever's taking care of you, your teachers, you guys are one team. And when you say, hey, this is what I'm having trouble with, that's when we all come together to help you. That's what we're here for. We're not here to yell at you or to, or to make you feel like less. We're telling you, hey, if you have a problem, let us know. Always tell your parents, talk to your parents, talk to your teachers. Um, even if you have an older brother or sibling that can help you, talk to them too and see if they can help you. If they can't help you, trust me, somebody will. But with all that said, you guys, um, I know we were doing my diamond painting, but I just wanted to let you guys know to get you uplifted, to get into school, um, pay attention in school. Um, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Um, just, just, just think of happy thoughts when you're in class. Think of, um, you know, something that makes you happy and, and, and do your work. I'll be all right. With all that being said, not going to bore you enough. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope 
as if a, if a parent is watching this, I know it's kind of hard. Maybe like okay, the school thing, this homeschooling is not working, and you have your job and everything. But I mean, I get it. I'm going through the same thing. A lot of people, our, our kids are going through a, the same thing, and it's just to see your kids just struggling and and they're like don't have no energy where they want to just get up in the morning and go to school you got to consistently like come on come on get to school go to school and you cooking i'm up at five o'clock until till now you know just like hey what, what we gotta do talk to them i know it's frustrating but um just talk to them um calmly um because sometimes they could be going through something you don't know if they're being bullied on on the screen because I know I heard some of my friends um, saying that the kids were bullying some kid on the on, on while they're in class and I'm like where was a teacher when they were being bullied and kids were talking about the little boy and I'm pretty sure he did not want to get back on the computer because he was being bullied and talking about to other kids and he, um, they said, you know, they, you know, when kids talk, they say a lot of things and I'm like, like, that makes me wonder, like, is my child being bullied on a thing? And if not, I'm pretty sure the teacher will stop it. But, um, so I know it's kind of hard for other kids. So we can just help our kids out the best way we can. I know it's frustrating. We're not used to. Being a teacher, you know, we have to wear five months. We have to wear the wife, the teacher, the referee, the counselor, um, the 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 tutor. You know, it's like, and then you got to cook, clean, wash clothes, and you got your bills and all the other parenting things that you have to do. But I know we you got we wasn't ready for it to be that because we're used to the teachers doing it. But it's kind of good that we get involved into our kids education so you can really see where your child is at um so just go easy on them a little bit because it's like i know it's kind of hard for these kids and kids stress out as much as us parents stress